Good evening. Um, I think that uh, I Am Cuba, Soy Cuba, um, is really a very strange film indeed. Um, I mean, first of all, it lay forgotten uh, until it was rediscovered in the middle 90s by um, Martin Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola. Um, and when it uh, reappeared, um, it was generally dismissed by the mainstream media as kind of a blatant piece of communist propaganda and communist kitsch. And in many ways it is. Um, but what makes it truly exceptional um, is the extraordinary visual poetics of the film. So the first thing is to emphasize that no, it's not a Cuban film. And the Cubans themselves were not terribly impressed by it in various ways. It's a Russian take um, on the Cuban Revolution. Um, it's scripted by the popular Russian poet uh, Yevgeny Yevtushenko and by uh, a young Enrique Pineda Barnett, uh, who became later on um, uh, one of uh, the leading uh, directors of uh, the ICAIC, the Cuban Film Institute, which was the Cuban co-producer. Um, Enrique is 84, 84 this year. Um, the cinematography is by uh, Sergei Ulusevsky, who was a cinematographer of absolutely um, outstanding inventiveness and daring, no question about that. Um, we previously worked with the director Kalatazov on The Cranes Are Flying in 1957's best known film. Um, it was, uh, how did it get made? Um, at the beginning of the Cuban Revolution, when the Film Institute was set up, um, uh, the idea of creating a film industry in a country which was so small and which didn't have a film industry, um, you know, was one of the uh, problems that they had to face. It was kind of pure political voluntarism to set the institute up in the first place. Um, and one of the ways that they did it was by inviting foreign filmmakers, um, especially documentarists, to come and work with them, and also uh, engaging in three co-productions with uh, Eastern European countries. Um, and this, with Russia, was the most ambitious of them. Uh, and the Cubans were smart enough to know that uh, the Russian style and method of filmmaking is completely different from uh, anything that any of them had experienced, including the ones who were already filmmakers. And so they prevailed on the Russians uh, to bring all their own equipment and transport so as not to tie up the Cuban production facilities for the period that it would take to make. And Russian production uh, in those days was um, very leisurely. This film took 14 months to shoot. Um, so the disruption would have been huge. Um, and part of the advantage of doing this was that the Russians then left all their gear at the end um, of the benefit of the Cuban Institute. The filmmakers were perfectly aware that um, they were outsiders. Um, Rusevsky later um, explained that uh, they all knew that they couldn't really get inside the subject. They weren't writing a novel after all. Um, uh, and, and that uh, it, it would be hopeless for them to think that they could give an accurate portrayal uh, of Cuban reality. And so they opted for a poetic vision instead. Uh, and it's a poetic vision which kind of harks back to um, an, an existing R uh, Russian view of, of, of Cuba as an exotic island um, going back to the poetry that was written by Mayakovsky when he was to Cuba in the 1920s. Um, but this was a solution which allowed them to depart from kind of orthodox linear and realist narrative uh, in favor of an episodic structure um, of emblematic scenes but projected on an epic scale. Um, so there are four episodes which are linked by um, a, a female voiceover who is credited as the voice of Cuba um, uh, and, and, and utters lines like, um, uh, I thought your ships brought happiness addressed to Christopher Columbus. Ships took my sugar and left me in tears. Um, it was pretty true enough, uh, I suppose. But the whole thing is very schematic. Uh, and um, 
And then there's also kind of Kalatasov was accused of uh, kind of reveling in the decadence that he portrays in the first episode and, um, and, and uh, aestheticizing poverty. Um, and I think there's certainly a charge uh, to be made there. Um, um, but the script is very schematic and the characters are quite simplistic. Um, and the acting is mostly non-professional actors um, and rather <coughs> wooden, except for uh, Sergio Corrieri, um, who some of you may know from uh, his role in Memories of Other Development by Thomas Gutierrez Salea in 1968, uh, and another notable Cuban actor, Salvador Wood. I think that this is probably for both of them their first screen appearances. Uh, but the film is amazing because it's visually amazing, because it's Urusevsky uh, pulling out all the stops. Um, so um, from the word go, very high contrast cinematography which renders the cane fields the way you've never seen them before and probably never will ever again. Um, Handheld camera, wide angle lens with distorting uh, effects, high angles, low angles, whatever, and much celebrated by many of the critics. Two particular uh, shots, one in the first episode and the other in the third episode, um, where the camera is uh, doing what appear to be uh, impossible things. Even granted that since then, you know, we've got steady cams and we've got all sorts of other things and so on, uh, and yet, um, uh, you know, when you see these shots, you, you still today, you wonder how the hell did they do that? Um, maybe uh, one shouldn't be asking something like that when you're watching a film. Um, you should just be taking it in. Um, so maybe the last word should go to Enrique Pineda Barnett, who used to tell a story uh, years later about Urusevsky um, visiting Paris um, and meeting Picasso. Uh, Picasso, who was, of course, uh, an old communist um, and knew a thing or two about Marx's theory. Um, and they don't have much in common in terms of language, so it's a halting conversation. But uh, Rusevsky comes to Picasso's studio, and Picasso um, uh, puts on his Russian samovar and takes out some, uh, some of his own ceramic cups uh, and offers Rusevsky uh, some tea. And then says to Rusevsky, uh, what do you prefer, the cup or the tea? And Rusevsky, being very polite, of course, replies, the cup. To which Picasso says, that's the trouble with you Russians, you always prefer the form over the content. 